Uh, distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, you all are welcome, welcome here in this webinar organized by Nepal Institute of International Relations uh, on the topic of um, geopolitical opportunities and challenges of uh, Millennium Challenge Corporation, MCC. Uh, I guess all the guests have been already joined uh, in the session and participants are joining. Our host will uh, join them accordingly. Now, without uh, delaying uh, the start, uh, I would like to uh, introduce and request the chairperson of uh, Nepal Institute of International Relations, uh, Dr. Rishi Raj Adhikari, to chair this session. Dr. Adhikari. Yes. Namaste to everybody and welcome. Now, the session is started. <laughs> now, I would like to welcome and introduce our distinguished guests. Uh, we have uh, very renowned uh, scholars today with uh, a very distinguished political leader. First of all, I would like to welcome and introduce uh, Honorable Mr. Bhim Bahadur, Dr. Bhim Bahadur Rawal uh, as a inaugural speaker of the session. Namaskar. Dhanabad. Thank Rao's, you. Dr. Rao's, uh, Rahul is already there. Honorable Dr. Bhim Bahadur Rawal is a former DPM and Defense Minister in 2015. He led the Ministry of Home Affairs in 2009. Mr. Rawal was the two-time Minister for Commerce, Civil Aviation and Tourism in 1995. He led the Ministry of Science and Technology in 1998. He has been the Member of Parliament time and again since 1994. Mr. Rawal is the Standing Committee Member of Ruling Nepal Communist Party right now. He was the vice chairperson of then CPN UML. He is now a member of parliament from Assam 1. He is a PhD academic in political science from Trivan University, Nepal. Uh, welcome, Dr. Ra Honorable Dr. Rawal. Now, uh, I would like to welcome and introduce uh, Professor Dr. Bishwambar uh, Pakurel. Professor Pakurel, are you hearing me? Are you here? Professor Dr. Bishambar Pakurel. Edmin, is he here now? Is he in waiting room? Oh, oh maybe he's coming. I request uh, the chair of the session to just uh, let him know that uh, we have already started. Dr. Adhikari? Yeah, I'm yeah, I guess Yeah, I guess you are doing that. Uh, now, similarly, uh, we have a distinguished uh, fellow from uh, Colombo, Sri Lanka, Dr. Anil Jainth Fernando. Uh, Dr. Anil, are you hearing me? Yes, I'm hearing you very well. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Anil Jainth Fernando is a full-time faculty member uh, to the Department of Accounting. Uh, Faculty of Management Studies and Commerce, University of Sri Jai Bardhanepura, Sri Lanka, as a senior lecturer. Dr. Anil holds a BCom special degree with first class honors from University of Kelenia, Sri Lanka. He completed a postgraduate diploma in accounting and finance at University of Sri Lanka, Jai Bardhanepura, and obtained two master's degree, one from Asian Institute of Technology, Bangkok, and Thailand, and the other from uh, European Business School, Paris. Dr. Anil completed his doctoral degree at ASEAN Institute of Technology, Bangkok in 2013 and presented and published research papers at uh, international conferen conferences and journals. 
He is a fellow member of the Institute of Chartered Accountants of Sri Lanka, FCA, and the Institute of Certified Management Accountants of Sri Lanka. Uh, similarly, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, uh, invited uh, Honorable Dr. Bimala Rai Powdell. Uh, at the earlier, she was uh, okay with the invitation and she uh, consented for the program, but later on, maybe she was busy somewhere. So due to her, due to her uh, request, uh, and uh, maybe she is a little busy, uh, maybe she is busy somewhere, so she could not uh, join the session uh, of uh, today. So we are sorry for that. Actually, we were looking for a lady participant, uh, but uh, uh, she as she declined at the last moment we are feeling so sorry so uh, we apologize for her uh, uh, not being able to present here today now uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, let me start the session uh, till dr professor dr pakurel arrives uh, with uh, some quick points uh, observing the uh, issue of the Brazil, day. just one minute. Sorry. Yes, Dr. Uh, Bishumbar Pakral says he is still waiting for the link. Then can you send him? So waiting for the link. So we uh, have already <laughs> sent him the link. Yeah, but he says he hasn't got it. So let's send again. Okay. Uh, sorry. Uh, he, he had to check the uh, email, maybe. Uh, we can send you. Is he waiting? Uh, yeah. I think, yeah. Similarly, sometimes, I just... Uh, yeah, I sometimes just, person are coming in, uh, uh, staying in the waiting room. I think someone has to just monitor it. You see, now oh. I see one person in the waiting room. Yeah. Because uh, that option may have been uh, <laughs> on. That is the reason. Instead of joining the meeting directly, once I connect, I may be prompted to the waiting room. I think yeah, if someone looks into that, that would be all right. I mean, when the meeting progresses, someone, yeah, then now there is another one. Rohit uh, Bastola. Oh, Rohit Bastola, maybe. Uh, yeah. Rohit Bastola. And uh, yeah, 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 admin will do. Yeah, yeah. admin will do that, but uh, the speakers must have uh, Well, Bimala, Bimala, uh, Dr. Bimala has already arrived. Oh, is she here now? Uh, she must be. I have not seen her photograph, but she had uh, requested for uh, joining this uh, webinar and I have admitted her. Uh, yeah, yeah, all right. But uh, she has told us that she will not speak, but if uh, she could manage the time, she will attend here just to listen. So maybe she is here. If Dr. Bimala, uh, if you are listening, do do you want to uh, do you want uh, to say? No, I, I will leave. I will leave very shortly. But I just wanted to participate uh, during your inaugural speech. Okay. All right. All right. Thank you. You are, you are welcome, Dr. Bimala. I will just listen to you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Professor Bishambar Pakurel arrives. Uh, I would like to add some point here as a startup. Mute. Uh, you got sir. I guess stopping your microphone mute by Rasa. I mean, I'm listening to you. Okay. 
Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, are, are you hearing me now? Hello? Yes, yes, no. Can we see? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. <clears throat> Initiated by the then President George W. Bush in 2002, Millennium Challenge Corporation MCC was ratified and declared by US Congress in 2004 for supporting poorer countries, uh, poorer countries reduce poverty through economic growth, adhering to free market policies and democratic principles. MCC has invested over at 40, 49 countries around the globe, categorically 26 in Asia Pacific region, 13 in Africa and 10 in Latin American continent. Nepal and Sri Lanka are the only two countries in South Asia to sign in on the MCC agreement. It seems globally that the 22 countries have completed the projects. 20 countries are set to be complete, complete uh, implementing the projects and three African countries, uh, namely Madagascar, Tanzania, and Mali withdrew them, whereas Sri Lanka has set pending the agreement. Nepal signed the agreement of MCA in 2017, and now there is an already established regulatory body under the agreed name MCA Nepal to handle the projects under MCC agreement between the parties. It has been agreed that the US government will provide US dollar 500 million in grants while Nepali side has to put in US dollar 130 million for the agreed projects. The two parties have been agreed upon for 300 kilo, around 300 uh, kilometer road construction and maintenance, 400 KB transmission line corridor and connecting to the cross-border transmission line with India. Let's have a quick look on the chronology of the development of MCC agreement in Nepal. December 2011, under the Prime Minister's uh, ship of Dr. Baburam Bhattrai, Nepal selected uh, for a small fresh, uh, threshold program. Uh, December 2014, when there was Sushil Koirala as a Prime Minister, MCC Board of Directors voted to make Nepal uh, eligible for the compact. In fact, there were two other countries, uh, Mongolia and Philippines as well for that category. Uh, in August uh, 2017, Nepal uh, compact approved by MCC board of directors. Uh, there was uh, Prime Minister Seth Bahadur Deobai at that time. And during his premiership in 2017, Nepal signed on the compact. Uh, and May 2018, uh, on the uh, under the Prime Ministership of uh, Prime Minister K.P. Sarma Oli, uh, the incumbent Prime Minister, Nepal approved MCA Nepal Formation Order through the Cabinet meeting. MCA Nepal has publicly said that the U.S. and Nepal government are agreed uh, upon to start the projects from 30th June 2020 onwards, just after 17 days from today. But can they start the work by the declared date? According to the understanding, Nepal has to fulfill six preconditions before the project is start. Uh, the, but uh, the two major uh, preconditions, ratification of the compact agreement by the parliament and approval to the MCA to all the project sites for land acquisition and forest clearance. <laughs> have not been fulfilled yet by Nepali side, as there is a pressure of time to implement the agreed projects. Not only that, there are maybe three major dimensions of MCC in Nepal. They may be Nepal-US relations, Nepal-China relations, and socio-economic development of Nepal. USA and China both are the old friends and development partners to Nepal. Nepal enjoys the bilateral relations with both the countries since around uh, the 50s of the last century. Is Nepal aware of the emerging geopolitical interests of two superpowers in the social context of South Asia and Nepal itself? Does Nepal has a well sketched plans for profit and loss with this agreement? Taking, talking about the MCC, what will be the best way for Nepal to stand up? Should Nepal take it only as a financial grant without the political interest or there is a political strategy as well, political and military strategy as well. If there are political plans and military plans, like widely talked Indo-Pacific strategy,
how can Nepal go together with China? Are there any hidden agreements behind the red in, in bulk of use money? What will be the reaction of China if Nepal finally enters into MCC? As a party of the Chinese Green Project BRI, will this be a dualistic position of Nepal to joining the hands with the MCC? Or even is Nepal under the leadership of CP, uh, uh, Nepal Communist Party deteriorating the bilateral relations with the US by creating tensions on the, on the already signed in agreement? Or Nepal enforces Beijing to rethink on the trans Himalayan relations by accepting MCC. Even more, can Nepal make a sustainable balance between the greater powers strategic state like MCC and BRI? Do NAM and MCC can go together? Similarly, what will be the socio-economic model of transformation of Nepal with a balanced and conscious geopolitical alert? Surrounded by such many questions, we today are going to have a very scholarly and fair debate about the fate of Nepal under the MCC. Renowned fellow speakers will speak on the topic with their knowledge and experiences. Sri Lankan experience on this regard will be fruitful to us as they have, though signed in later than Nepal and MCC, covered a long course of accepting to postponing the agreement. So ladies and gentlemen, may I now request uh, with this, all the backgrounds, may I now request uh, Mr. Nanda Kumar Thapa, the executive uh, member of uh, Nepal Institute of International Relations, NIR, to deliver his welcome note uh, to the panelists and the uh, participants. Mr. Nanda Kumar Thapa, are you hearing me? Nanda sir. Nanda sir, sir, ko mute sati on mute gun was. Sir, ko team matter. Nanda sir. So, host and chair, is there uh, Professor Pakure now? No, no. Not yet. Dr. Rishi, I have sent you the link. So please just forward him. <clears throat> so, so, yes, Nanda sir, you please proceed with your okay, welcome. Okay, okay, okay. Please. Uh, thank you, Mr. MC Yugraj Cholagai, the Vice President of Nepal Institute of International Relations. For the time for welcome note, you have scheduled, I think, you have scheduled me for 15 minutes for my welcome speech. However, I hope that I will finish before the time and save it for our guest speakers. Respected president of this webinar and the president of Nepal Institute of International Relations as well. Table speaker for inaugural speech, Dr. Bhim Hadurao. Respected professor, Dr. Bishambar Pyakorel. Honorable speaker, Dr. Bimla Podel Rai. Respected speaker, Dr. Anil Jayantha Fernando. Participants, dear colleagues, online assisting technicians, and ladies and gentlemen. It is, is it clear, Vibrasan? Yes, sir, it's pretty clear. Okay. On behalf of Nepal Institute of the International Relations and Thapa Kumar myself, I sincerely wish very good afternoon and heartily welcome to you all in this webinar. Nepal Institute of the International Relations is a non-political and non-profit think tank of international relations, diplomacy, and foreign policy. Although it is newly established, it has been working to fulfill its goal accordingly. In the pandemic strain of COVID-19, Nepal has been passing through some... Sorry, just, uh, yes? Are you listening?
Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, please proceed. Some days ago, NIR has already organized an event on Nepal, India border, particularly Limpia Dura, Kali Pani, Kalapani, Lipule issue. Today we are on the geogra on the geopolitical opportunities and challenges of Millennium Challenge Corporation in Nepal. On the basis of the eventual circumstances, the issue of MCC in Nepal has been a hit, uh, hot cake from the houses to the grassroots. There are varieties of arguments heard for accepting and not accepting of it. In this context of the burning issue, MCC, it's really a great importance to welcome Dr. Bhim Rawal, the member of the upper house of representatives of Nepal. He has been the former home minister of Nepal. We have been listening to his very basic to high level deliberations on MCC in the upper house and El Johar as well. But today we have invited him as the inaugural speaker and as to make clear of the queries related to his deliberations raised as well. Welcome you sir in this program. Likewise, as Professor Dr. Bishomar Pakrel is concerned, he is a renowned, has he come? Yes, yes. Yes. Okay. yes, yes. Okay, Pakrel, he is a renowned economist, not only in Nepal, but in abroad also. He had yeah. also been to Sri Lanka holding uh, the responsibility of the ambassador there. Beside of them, I am personally very happy to see Dr. Bishambar Pakrel in the sense that during 30s of BS, I was one of his students in Tribhuvan University. My long awaited namaskar and welcome, sir, in this program. Welcome, sir. Thank you. As of the above, NIIR is very grateful to Dr. Bimla Rai Cordell for her gorgeous presence as a speaker. She is member of National Assembly of Federal Parliament of Nepal. As the theme is concerned, Dr. Bimla Rai Cordell has done PhD in development studies from Institute of Social Studies, The Hague, Netherlands. We feel honored to welcome you on this burning issue, ma'am. Finally, the last but not the least respected speaker to welcome is Dr. Anil Jayantha Fernando from Colum Columbia, Colombo, Sri Lanka. As I know, Sri Lanka started dealing with MCC before Nepal. So his experiences can be of a great advantage for Nepal. Sir, we heartily welcome you in the program in Nepal to have shared your valuable ideas. And my welcome not won't be complete without welcoming all of the invited respected participants, dear colleagues, our online technical personnel, dear Bishal Podel and Rabindra Cholagai, and ladies and gentlemen, I honorly, respectfully, dearly welcome you all for your kind and cooperating presence, even in this worldwide pandemic of COVID-19. NIR wishes your free and comfortable participation for your deliberations and fulfillment of the expectations of the participants. We finally hope a grand success of the program as set objectives. Once again, welcome and thank you. Thank you, everybody. Uh, thank you, Mr. Nandakumar Thapa for his welcome remarks. Welcome. Uh, uh, at the meantime, Professor Bishambar Pakurel, uh, I guess uh, he has arrived here. Uh, yeah. let, me, uh, let me welcome and introduce him as a speaker of the program. Uh, Professor Pakurel, you are welcome. Uh, Bishambar Pakurel taught economics at university, Tuvan University for 39 years. He holds master's 
and PhD in economics from Cleveland University and master's in international affairs, development studies from Ohio University, USA, and postdoctoral research in economics from the University of Maryland at College Park, USA. A Fulbright Scholar, Professor Pakurel, has been professional associate at the East West Center Honolulu, a scholar in residence at the Rockefeller Foundation in Italy, and a visiting scholar at the International Food Policy Research Institute, uh, IFPRI, in Washington, DC. Uh, Dr. Pakurel is also a fellow at uh, South Asia Network for Environmental Economics and Development. Uh, Dr. Pakurel is uh, uh, a president of Nepal Economist, Economic Association as well. We welcome Dr. Pakurel. And uh, without further delay, now I would like to uh, invite uh, to deliberate his uh, uh, ideas and points to uh, uh, honorable uh, uh, inaugural speaker of this program, Dr. Bhim Bahadur Rao. Dr. Rawal, you have uh, 25 minutes. Please proceed. The floor is yours. Dr. Rawal, mute voice. Dr. Rawal, are you hearing me now? Sorry, sorry. Sorry. Uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Chaulage. Before, before entering into my deliberations, I would like to make one point clear. I am not a member of Upper House. I am an elected member from Assam District Constituency Number One, member of House of Representatives. Yeah, yeah, that's right. With this <laughs> little clearance, uh, Mr. Chairman, first of all, I would like to extend my cordial thanks to all associated with the Nepal Institute of International Relations for organizing this important webinar on geopolitical opportunities and the challenge of Millennium Challenge Corporation or MCC. Also, I would like to welcome our Sri Lankan friends to participate in this important webinar. Nepal's geopolitical location itself is an independent way of state functioning as the country has very large and powerful neighbors, like China and India. Though the concept of geopolitics used in 1899 AD by a political scientist of Sweden, many countries and con many theories and concepts have been developed in the world since then. Western countries have been continuously adopting their strategies and policies, keeping geopolitics in view in modern times too. Countries of the East or in the part of our continent, including of our continent, also have been pursuing their strategies and the policies, keeping geopolitical situation in view. China's BRI and the US government's Indo-Pacific strategies are also largely promulgated, keeping the emerging geopolitical situation in the world. Nepal's geopolitics has been influenced by her landlocked location, the tripartite agreement between Nepal, India, and Britain on Gorkha recruitment, the peace and friendship treaty with India, which was signed in 1950, and unregulated borders with India, border dispute with India, including Limpiadura, Lipulek, and Kalapani has further complicated geopolitical environment induction of Millennium Challenge Corporation MCC scheme under the agreement that is submitted by the Nepal government in the parliament for ratification has further created some geo strategies. Nepal has to seriously think about increasing interest of both the neighbors of Nepal, sensitivity of China about its soft belly, autonomous region of Tibet, the West, especially of the US and the INGOs, an independent foreign policy and assertion of self-determination is the best foreign policy option for Nepal that can well serve the national interest. We are all aware of the ups and the downs faced by Nepal in the past characterized by 
political upheavals, upheavals and instability. Such situation has forced our country Nepal to lag behind in many areas of national life, especially in economic domain. Nepal could not fully utilize and mobilize her own resources because of weaker governance compounded with political instability on the one hand and outside inference, interference on the other. It was seen right after the political change of 1950 and afterwards in several occasions, including in the peace and the constitution making process of Nepal. It was largely influenced by the geopolitical location of the country. Real, realizing the situation, political parties and actors promulgated the constitution of Nepal emphasizing on independence, geographical integrity, national unity, dignity, and self-determination of the country. Accordingly, Nepal has declared to pursue an independent foreign policy based on principles of Panchasil and alignment. The ruling Nepal Communist Party is fully committed to these principles as declared in its political report and election manifesto during the last general elections. Dear participants, on the backdrop of all those factors and imperatives, one can look into the provisions of the agreement signed, which was signed in September 2017 between Nepal and the MCC. Criticism and comments on the MCC agreement are not made in a subjective, in a subjective way on behalf of myself. These are based on the facts elaborated in various provisions of the main agreement, implementation agreement, and other agreements which are not made public yet related to the MCC project. It is astonishing that there are half a dozen additional agreements made between the Nepal government and the MCC about the pro project which are not submitted in the parliament. No one has clarified why so many agreements are needed? Various provisions of those agreements clearly show the following facts. I'm not going to create all these facts on my own. Rather, these points are based on different provisions clearly stated in the said agreement. On a call agreement, and which violates the principles of sovereign equality, some of the provisions of the agreement are contrary to established principles of international law, the UN Charter, principles of Panchasil and non-alignment. These provisions also contradict with the political orientation of socialism, independent foreign and policy of self-reliance and self-determination of Nepal. On the contrary to the bilateral agreement, the agreement has obliged Nepal to seek permission of India while select, selecting projects for Nepal. Some people say that, well, if you have to construct transmission line in Gorakhpur in, on the on Indian soil, you have to take permission of India. According to international law, you cannot go beyond the borders. If Nepal has to collaborate on transmission lines with India, then either the MCC has to enter in a separate agreement with India, or Nepal can enter into agreement relating to its own land and the approvals can renegotiate with India. But on the, on the same time, one cannot enter into such bilater bilateral agreement mentioning the name of third country, especially seeking the permission of a third country. That is totally wrong. Nepal is bound, according to the agreement, Nepal is bound to accept the present US laws and the laws which will be enacted in future. You will be astonished hearing this point. Also, Nepal is obliged to accept the US security, economic, and social interests. Provision will have serious implications to Nepal's bilateral relations with other countries in the future if it is ratified. MCC was established in 2003 as an institution, as, an, as a corporation, 
to promote the U.S. global security, economic, and other interests in the world, which is clearly stated since year 2002 in the U.S. global strategy, which is continuously mentioned in the Indo-Pacific strategy too. It is not only been a part of global U.S. security interest, but also a part of the U.S. Indo-Pacific strategy, as I mentioned. It is clearly stated in the documents released by the U.S. Department of Defense, but also by the U.S. ministers that Nepal's, well, ministers, Nepal's constitution and the policy and the political line of the ruling Nepal Communist Party do not allow, allow to join a global power against other friendly countries collaborating with strategic grouping. Agreement between the Nepal government and the MCC is only a bilateral grant agreement. However, it, is, it has been called a treaty under international law. It is entirely wrong and misleading. About $388 million, that is 77.0% will be spent on physical in infrastructure as it is divided, it is stated in the agreement. About $130 million will be spent beyond physical in infrastructure. Agreement has not elaborated the pattern of expenditure of Nepal's contribution, which is $130 million. Thus, only 61.5% of $630 million is seen as an expenditure on physical in infrastructure, as stated in the agreement itself. Similarly, the cost of per kilometer line is very high. If the agreement has to be ratified by the Nepali parliament, it should be done according to Article 2279, which require two third, two third majority. This article is related to the distribution of natural resources, uh, security on peace uh, and friendship, etc. The intention of the present process of the ratification seemed to overrule, overrule the Nepali laws in the interest of the MCC. Projects that, for example, electricity transmission line and road maintenance are selected by a study project led by the MCC itself. And the report is called Nepal Growth Diagnostic. Transmission line is determined according to that uh, study. And the, the previous master plan, which was carried, carried out by the assistance of the World Bank of the Nepal Electricity Authority has been changed afterwards. Property under the projects, including the transmission line and the land used by transmission lines will be owned and controlled by the MCC for indefinite period of time. That is ridiculous. MCA Nepal, which is constituted under a special decision of the cabinet, is vested unlimited power and authority, and it is responsible to the MCC, not to the Nepal government. The Nepal government is completely barred, restricted or restricted to provide any suggestion and instruction to the MCA Nepal. On the contrary, the Nepal government is obliged to follow suggestions provided by the MCC. The MCC is vested powers to terminate the agreement providing a notice of 30 days in advance and the Nepal government restricted to do so and obliged to fulfill many liabilities in case of termination of the agreement. Thus the state's power and authority is transgressed contrary to the constitution of Nepal Honorable, Honorable Rahul, we are not uh, being able to hear you very well. Maybe others also are facing the same Is problem. So? Maybe, yeah, not, not so well. I can hear clearly you know? your voice. Oh, all right, how, all right. how is it now? now? Maybe is it this right? is because okay. of the... Uh, it's okay now. Uh, yeah, it's very clear. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Right. MCC now. is vested powers to terminate the agreement providing a notice of 30 days in advance, and Nepal government is restricted to do so. 
and obliged to fulfill many liabilities in case of termination of the agreement. Thus, the state's power and authority is transgressed contrary to the constitution of Nepal and the Nepali laws. MC Nepal board will be independent from the Nepal government and its decision could be reviewed only by a decision of the judicial court in Nepal. However, MC Nepal board can amend and change the provisions of the agreement without following parliamentary and administrative process of Nepal. As you know, now the agreement is tabled in the parliament for ratification. On the one hand, we have to ratify the agreement. On the other, in future, the board can change any provision of the agreement, not only the main agreement, but the provisions of other agreements, which are several. Nepal has also contributed $130 million to MCC projects as a grant. How do you think about it? Nepal has to provide grant to MCC, but the right to intellectual pro property is solely vested to MCC for indefinite period of time. Logo of the MCC will be used in the project and logo of the Nepal government cannot be used at all. This signifies the project is solely run and owned by MCC itself. The interest of the amount deposited in the bank directly goes to the account of the MCC in the US. If it was really a grant, then the interest received from the interest, then that money should go to the expenditure of the particular projects. Nepal cannot deport its personnel wherever required during the implementation of the project without the prior approval of the MCC. MCC can enter into social affair of Nepal in the guise of gender and social integration. On the one end, we say that it, this is an economic development project. On the other, there are special agreements giving rights to MCC to enter into our social affairs. All personnel, all personnel are to be hired by the MCC Nepal. Nepal is obliged to provide unhindered entry to foreign nationals to work in the projects and accept the process as determined by the MCC to engage the representatives of the NGOs and the civil society. Final approval of the agreement will be through a letter of the MCC, even if the agreement is ratified by the parliament of Nepal. If the agreement can be implemented only after the final approval of the MCC through a letter, then what is the meaning of ratification from the Nepali parliament? It is nothing rather than a domination on a state. No clarity about the management and use of transmission lines and roads after their completion. Rather, there is a provision of private company that might produce, distribute, and determine prices of electricity, which is, which is that company, government, national, or international. Nothing is clear. But by hindsight, the provision is oriented to create of a foreign company that can own, operate the transmission line and the ownership of the transmission line according to the provision will be vested to the MCC. Some people say that, look, this is a project only for five years. No. There are seven provisions which clearly say that at the first stage, the duration of time will be extended for five years. Then the MCC will have ownership on all property for indefinite period of time. The act, there are eight provisions to give rights to MCC for an indefinite period of time. Rights to, rights to review 
of the decision about partners are vested to MCC. All compensations are to be paid by the Nepal government. On the one end, if any, any if some things, then the compensation will have to pay by the Nepal government. But at the same time, the Nepal government have, has no right to even supervise and instruct the MC Nepal. All foreign personnel are acquitted for their omission and the commission in the project works. Even they commit criminal act, they will be acquitted. All procurement activities will be carried out according to the US federal law and management control and appropriation of grant will be handled by MCC. What's this? First, all these points which I, which I mentioned are best on the specific provisions made in the <laughs> Who is this speaking there? Sorry, somebody was unmuted, maybe. Somebody so, interfered. Yeah. yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, this point... Mr. Rahul, by the way, you have only five minutes left, all right? Okay, You're okay, right. I, I am going to finish. First agreement made between Madagascar and the MCC was failed. Sri Lanka withdrew from the agreement and the agreement amended in landlocked Mongolia because of controversies. Mr. Chairperson, all those provisions have posed serious challenges before Nepal. Nepal has to protect their, her integrity, independence, and dignity on the one end and man maintain its good relation with international community on the other. Nepal's geopolitical imperatives have made it more sensitive and complicated. In such a situation, Nepal has to firmly adhere constitutional provisions of an independent foreign policy following the principles of Panchasil and effectively carry out diplomacy to convince international community, including neighbors and the US about her stance being prejudicial to none. Nepal can easily accept foreign grant under the MCC if the unequal, unjustified and detrimental to Nepal's independence and interest are amended or removed. We have no any prejudice to the US. We have already accepted all assistance provided by the US and other countries. Advocacy of Nepal, Nepal's independence and dignity does not mean any antagonism or any enmity to any country because every country protects its national interest, dignity, independence. Every country, Nepal has an opportunity to prove her independent position in the world so as to maintain warm relations with all friendly countries. If it is maintained with all commitment and in a proactive way, Nepal can be benefited from emerging geopolitical environment these days. On the contrary, if increasing geopolitical importance of the country is misused for self-aggrandizement or interest by an individual in power and outside interest are not assessed properly, Nepal may have to face more adverse situation in relevance to protecting her interest and independence in future. Neither any amount of money or personal interest, as all of us know that, is greater than the national interest and independence of a country. We can get about 10 to 11 billion rupees a year only, but our resources, which are more greater than this amount, are not properly utilized, as all of us we know, especially the economists like Professor Pakurel know very well. Finally, I wish a success of this webinar and extend my cordial thanks to you all for listening to me. If you have any queries and questions, it will be my pleasure to address them. Thank you very much. Namaskar. Thank you, Honorable Dr. Rahul, for your very <clears throat> prompt presentation and a very scholar uh, analysis from your side. Uh, we have already sent all the participants and the speakers uh, the uh, schedule of the program. So um, you all know that uh, after the completion of the deliberation by the speakers at first, we will then enter into the second round of the session that will be the question and answer session. So uh, uh, we will go to question and answer session after the two speakers. 
so may I now request to uh, deliver his speech to Dr. Professor Dr. Bismar Pakure. Pakure, uh, sir. Thank you, thank you. I'm ready. So I'll uh, very briefly give you the background of how it all emerged. And, uh, uh, sir, let me in, let me interfere you. If you have you have to uh, use the screen share, uh, there is an option for you. Thank you. Yeah, please, please no, proceed, no. sir. Uh, yeah, well, I'll, I'll proceed on. I'm not using my uh, slides because I couldn't complete that. So I will be, you know, merely uh, talking about a couple of issues uh, that has very importance. It's going on like a hot cake these days. So I'm thankful to Dr. Bhimrao, who as a, one of the member of high level uh, committee to assess the contract uh, he elaborated most of the critical issues that most of the Nepalese people are interested in. Uh, let me first of all uh, try to define uh, the geopolitical opportunities and challenges. You know, uh, political opportunities, as we all know, uh, depend on the circumstances surrounding political landscape. Uh, there has been some elaboration on it, and then opportunity should not be sort of structural. We talk a lot about institution, institutionalization, governance, etc., etc. But uh, the proponent of this philosophy uh, rather emphasize on the situational kind of aspect. So politics, especially international relations, are influenced by uh, geographical uh, uh, features. Uh, now, to, to come back to this uh, sort of understanding, uh, let me talk a few words about uh, the publication of National Security Strategy Report, Defense Strategy Report, and Nuclear Situation Analysis by the Defense Minister of the US government. After this publication, uh, IPS has become a national strategy of uh, Trump administration. Uh, I think uh, it is a more or less a revival of President Obama's Asia Pacific rebalancing you know, strategy. Uh, the boundary of uh, Indo-Pacific uh, is as we all are aware is Indian Ocean western part of the Pacific uh, and then the surrounding uh, countries. And one impo important issues to justify Indo-Pacific strategy was time and again elaborated by key individuals in US uh, politics was the free and open concept. Not to scare uh, the majority of the people who would intend to have a partnership in Indo-Pacific strategy. Uh, the US government authority time and again talk about you know, free and open concept. For instance, Mike Pompeo uh, delivered a keynote address in Washington DC on July 30, 2018. Uh, it was a Indo-Pacific business forum uh, IPS has now two components. When he talked about free, he basically emphasizes on a sort of uh, country's capability to maintain its sovereignty. You know, the IPS uh, uh, sovereignty. So free means be able to protect your own sovereignty. And when he talked about open, I quote unquote, uh, it includes fundamental rights, governance, open access to sea and air and connectivity, trade, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, we need to examine the possibility of why this concept is elaborated so forcefully in IPS. I suspect it is in response 
to China doing naval sort of maneuvers in so-called disputed waters of artificial islands in South China Sea. You know, Spatly Island has become greater attraction to many countries surrounding uh, South China Sea. Uh, because uh, this uh, Spratly Island, which was artificially created, has 11 billion barrels of untapped oil uh, and also 190 trillion cubic feet of natural gas. So from economic perspective, this is a very rich area. Number one, the mobility and rising influence of China, not only in South Asia, Southeast Asia and Africa, Latin America, et cetera. And number two, China uh, using this huge economic resources was sort of threat. You know, a couple of months ago, uh, both the Chinese and US fleet were pretty much neck to neck, you know. Thanks God, nothing happened. Both the countries compromised. So it's a pretty uh, delicate issue to talk about. The island has also been claimed by Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, Taiwan, and Vietnam. So it's not very much surprising if this group of the countries would collaborate with the US, including even India, because it is also uh, at the center to Indian Ocean, as we all know, uh, to seek a partnership with the US in Indo-Pacific strategy. Since the start of the Trump administration, the Department of State and the USAID have provided this region with over 4.5 billion US dollars as a foreign assistance program. Plus, you know, billions of dollars in other areas as well. Uh, you know, the US is uh, joining with the Mekong states, uh, you know, the town's transboundary river in this particular area uh, in Southeast Asia, world's 12th largest river basin is found in Mekong states. The Pacific Island countries, South Asian nations, Taiwan, and many others in IPS largely uh, face emerging challenges envisioned in IP vision, uh, which, were, which came out in November 4, uh, 2019. So Trump's vision are more elaborative after the publication of Indo-Pacific Strategy Report by Department of Defense on June 1, 2019. So let's come back to MCC Nepal. You know, MCC Nepal was originated in 2002 and the process was begun since 2011 and ultimately at the request of government of Nepal, agreement was signed on September 14, 2017, which was elaborated already by uh, Dr. Rahul. As of September, 2017, uh, MCC has formed partnership in 46 different countries around the world, including Nepal. This is what been found in their document, not in Nepal's document. Nepal will be the only country in South Asia that MCC provides a, a fund if this is ratified by the parliament. Sri Lanka also is in the pipeline, of course, but as uh, our previous speaker already uh, talked about, uh, there was a lot of problem and it was awfully delayed. Our Sri Lankan colleague would highlight on this, uh, but it was postponed because of the uh, December 2019 election of the president. Now they have a new government and then the government uh, has constituted a five men high level committee to look into the nitty gritties of the agreement. And then uh, ultimately the government intends to communicate to US government, uh, the MCC board, uh, that things will be decided after the parliamentary uh, sort of election uh, in August 5. So uh, we really don't know what will be the COVID-19 uh, scenario until then, but it has been extended. So they have been continuously discussing, there have been public discourse, you know, uh, 
lot of reports have been published from different think tanks and all. Uh, this whole initiative and confusion was uh, came out into the light only after uh, some member of the uh, ruling uh, uh, government uh, raised these issues. Otherwise, everything looked pretty quiet for a while. Uh, as of September 2017, I, I, I told you, uh, more than 46 partnerships have already been constituted. There are some critical issues in the MCC. You know, government, a lot of confusion about government audit. Uh, when I personally ask uh, the uh, deputy executive director, the executive director of MCC uh, office in Nepal, they told me that since uh, 2074, become somewhat uh, 2074, Office of Auditor General has already started doing uh, that audit that I don't know. The government has not brought out this into the picture. Uh, auditor, uh, what it is stated in the agreement is the auditor should be listed on the list of local auditors approved by Inspector General or US-based certified public accounting firm. You know, I don't know why this clause was added up. And then there is some confusion about the procurement and grants, which is in section 3.6. Rules in accordance to MCC program procurement guidelines will be based on competitive procedure and transparency. This is what the justification that they give in section 3.6. Uh, so far as the compact agreement uh, is concerned, the compact upon entry into force as Dr. Rahul also said, will prevail over the domestic laws of Nepal. It is argued that it will be endorsed from the parliament. So there is nobody beyond parliament. Everything would be decided by the parliament. In US case also, as this is taxpayers money, 500 million US dollars, it was already uh, gone. It had gone through uh, the house of representatives and. Uh, you know, two houses uh, of the Congress. So they, 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 they told us the responsible authorities who visited Nepal when we met them and tried to find out uh, what's going on behind the screen. And they said, uh, this is uh, the parliament's uh, decision. Uh, it will be endorsed very soon. And for that obvious reason, we said whatever agreement has been made in the contract, it will be above any other existing laws of the nation. Uh, this is debatable and we can dis discuss about this. Our bidding, you know, international bidding based not only on financial aspect. Uh, it is written that the waiters would be also given uh, to the technical aspect. Uh, and also there is a provision of two contractors. If one contractor fails to comply with the conditions and uh, leaves the uncomplete work and that will be pretty risky. So for security reason, uh, there is a provision of two contractors. But what we should have thought is, you know, uh, you know, since competing with high profile and accredited uh, institutions, international bidders, uh, it will be a bit difficult task to maintain that level of it is standards by Nepali contractors. So some clauses like, you know, priority would be given. Uh, given that uh, major uh, compliance is done, uh, if the board is happy, satisfied, uh, priority should be given to Nepali contractor. Otherwise, you know, what happened in uh, Afghanistan, for instance, you know, about one fourth of the project, we even don't know where it is, for what purpose the money has been spent. And our almost two third was owned by US contractors. Similar thing happened in Iraq, you know. So people suspect that with regards to, you know, whatever you tell us, uh, it's gonna be a more competitive, uh, competitive bidding. But there is a fear that based on many other important criteria, uh, if international contractors are picked up and Nepali contractors would be deprived this competitiveness would be there in the agreement. Uh, so this is the, some of the issues uh, that- Sorry, we... sorry to insert to interfere, Professor Frank, we have to uh, 
uh, sum up within three units, please. Uh, okay, I don't know. So there is a transmission line case also, uh, but when we try to inquire about this, they said rural electrification master plan, uh, which was brought out in September 20, 2017, uh, with the help of ADB, uh, the contract was given to Gesto, you know, and the Norway government supported this. So this is based on uh, Nepal Electricity Authority's master plan. So this is there. Uh, this was their response. As per the consent from India, they said consent has already been taken. And uh, with regards to cross-border 120 kilometer transmission line, 50-50% of the line will be constructed by both the countries, Nepal and India. Uh, there are a lot of questions in ratification of the parliament. You know, there are miscellaneous, miscellaneous issues as well. Um, you know, uh, limitations on the use of NCC funding, like Article 2, Section 2.7 states, that it will not be used for assistance to or training of the military, police, militia, National Guard, or other quasi-military organizations. Actually, US law prohibits it. This is what uh, was communicated to us when uh, current uh, ambassador, US ambassador visited our think tank at the Rarmah. It has been stated uh, in 10 points clarification as well. Uh, during his speech at ISSR, uh, our institute on September 27, 2019, the US ambassador Barry also reiterated that the fact that there is no link between MCC and IPPS is not member-based alliance, but MCC is an uh, independent foreign assistance agency based on external assistance. But the, the, the kind of statement made even by our own minister, like Mr. Gamali, he observed that, you know, it was largely a partnership and development partnership. But when you say this, and doesn't it include only disaster management, skills development, but also the training of peacekeeping personnel, I'm wondering how come this, uh, you know, training given to the army in the name of peace king personnel is included in the MCC project if it is completely non-political. Former defense secretary, Jim Mattis, in the plenary session of Sangrila Dialogue said, IPS was a subset of USA's broader security strategy. It actually justifies that IPS is a security strategy. You know, during his Nepal visit on May 2018, Mr. David Rans, Assistant Secretary for South Asia said, MCC was a critical part of the Indo-Pacific strategy. So IPS report on Pentagon aims at preserving congenial climate as China asserts its growing influence. The US in its Indo-Pacific strategy report stressed that China is a revisionist power and Russia has revitalized Malin actor. So that is showing evil disposition. And it indicates the clear intention of IPS strategy. So my stake uh, on possible amendments would be, you know, since there is differing views while explaining the possibilities in amendment and link between MCC and IPS, efforts should be made to bring out inter-party consensus before the ruling government decides. The project has broad-based geopolitical and economic implications. U.S. Ambassador in Nepal, Mr. Randy Berry says, MCC compact was concluded between February 17, 2012 and September 14, 2017. Discussion on the amendments is over. This is what he said in our think tank when he visited. We should understand, wait and see Sri Lanka's decision and simultaneously, you know, uh, explore the prospects for amendment, additional justification would be post-COVID priorities. You know, if you could include, uh, you know, to elevate, to, to, to make our economy recover uh, after this uh, pandemic, you know, a couple of things based on our own national priority could be uh, included in the agreement. But when US ambassador, you know, bluntly tells us that the possibility of its amendment is over. And in the meantime, another assistant secretary came over to our think tank and he said like, you know, maybe some, not in the contract per se, but in the separate piece of paper, 
Some agri can, agri agreements can be made. Uh, this is recorded, actually. So during the process of you know, ratifying uh, the agreement, some additional homework needs to be done by listening to what these individuals, responsible persons said in different forums of the world. With this, I will wind up uh, my comment. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Bishambhu Pakuril, sir, for your in-depth presentation. And it was so prompt also. Uh, now, uh, I would like to um, call upon Dr. Anil Jayanth Fernando from Colombo, Sri Lanka. Uh, Dr. Anil, are you there? Actually, as uh, hello, yeah, I'm yeah, hearing you. Yeah, yeah, Dr. Anil. So yes. it's your time for your sure. deliberation. Please, please uh, go ahead. Yeah, please give me the right to share my screen. Um, I, I have just uh, prepared a small uh, presentation slide just to assist me to uh, um, deliver the speech. All right, Dr. Anil, you can you can do that. I hope that everyone can see the screen. Yes. Yes. Okay. Um, let me first um, thank um, Nepal Institute of uh, International Relation uh, for giving uh, me this particular opportunity to talk about this timely issue, like uh, within this um, uh, um, global politics uh, uh, from geopolitical opportunities and challenges pertaining to MCC. Uh, since we also have that experience, even though we, we have not signed it yet, um, I think it's a timely topic and this um, sharing knowledge might uh, help us to uh, uh, further critically uh, look into these kind, not only these MCC and other types of uh, uh, apparatus uh, used in this, these economic models uh, in the time to come. Uh, everyone is just, I mean, aware of the global, uh, the political situation, just to uh, provide the basic premise for my discussion. It is good to recall the, the uh, about the uh, uh, structure and the content of, I mean, the global political, uh, 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 the context to some extent, the selected uh, geopolitical status um, uh, um, just recall uh, about the tendency for promoting nationalism throughout the world nowadays. Um, and um, US-China trade war, uh, then the need for uh, countries, sometimes especially these USA and China, to look for new tools and strategies to uh, uh, put their bearings in this um, uh, uh, the economic um, systems. And the uh, processing and controlling technology also has uh, a, big, a matter in, you know, I mean, even though it does not directly to a geopolitical situation, but directly it is connected. So who possess it, who controls, how big corporations acquire technology, how technology is going to embedded in politics. And the threats of nuclear weapons and the biodiversity issues you know, we talked about like, at really macro level are also concerned at this particular situation. And the implications of Brexit and the future of European Union and how are they going to uh, impact in these political situations. Then the geopolitics uh, situation like developed in Middle East uh, uh, countries and conflicts and all those things. So there are so many other things like these things can be considered as major uh, situation. Like it's good to recall our understanding about these things. Then the, uh, so before talking about MCC, the apparatus of capitalism. So capitalism uh, is not 
like uh, accepting its own defeat so they never so if you just carefully um, analyze the evolution the social evolution political evolution and how capitalism evolved and whenever capitalism faces its own problems inherent due to its mechanism it tries to come out with some more other new apparatus so therefore i consider this mcc as a new apparatus of dealing with a capitalism because capitalism in the neoliberal uh, the situation now there is a little bit pressure even from europe and the united states as well uh, the the Uh, the society is highly concerned about the market economy now so market economy is now uh, uh, crowding out and just uh, eroding into uh, societies now they they talk about uh, 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 the concept so how market economies are going to be market societies so therefore uh, this mcc apparently is looked to be a very hybrid type of um, instrument through which they can help developing countries they can elevate power and support economic growth and all these things but we need to be aware of critically analyze how it is going to be an apparatus of capitalism to uh, uh, protect them and it is debatable so we we can open up this discussion is it going to really help developing countries or to protect them then um, specifically coming to in a nutshell so some threats which are not seen like if you look at the mcc they they are not seen if you carefully analyze you can see like so that could be reasons why mcc had come out with this hybrid model and introduced uh, um, the world burning issues nobody can or reject for example mission reduce poverty through economic growth so i don't think that uh, uh, anybody can oppose this so if poverty is going to be reduced and economic growth can be achieved so that is really fantastic thing so then that is how i believe uh, uh, the things have been set to then the uh, process in such a manner it is stipulated in its agreements and document this particular specific type of grants they are not that is not a loan the grants are given on a highly competitive basis in a democratic manner so competitive selection process is there and uh, compet- uh, uh, the country led solution it's not because there is an accus- accusation for imf world bank and all, all the other devices uh, uh, institutions that always they they really come out with their own solution which do not fit for uh, developing countries just to uh, divert the public attention they may say that no this is the country led solution so you have to come out with your own of course if you look at like uh, uh, all these mcc agreements areas that we have discussed are linked to your country issues so country solution led solution country led implementation so the previous speaker very clearly explained so how finally when it is going to be implemented so whether country is implementing or mcc is implementing whether it is a complex solution or solution to them so we we need to carefully uh, uh, just uh, um, understand uh, uh, these how these threads are connected to each other and the broad consultation with the society it says that no they are not going to give this particular grant unless and otherwise there is a broad consultation in the society it has to come from the society but in sri lankan case so people came to know about this particular mcc only at the time it was announced that the government is going to now but it was just lasting for more than 10 years started in 2006 so we came to know about this thing i mean the general public came to know about this thing the last year 2019 after 13 years and the use of score cards verified by independent agencies so it's a kind of another tool that i believe uh, um, of course tools indicators score cards and all these things are a uh, uh, kind of uh, um um uh, instruments which uh, uh, general public might see that yes they are objective so therefore we do not think of the possibilities of manipulating and using these thing to achieve their own purposes then the general areas covered in mcc are attractive 
and burning issues. So these are the pitfalls that you've got to be very careful when we uh, analyze MCC. And other noteworthy facts about the governance of MCC, um, it is declared as an independent agency to help developing countries to reduce poverty. But if you look at the governance, especially the board governance, so board consists of eight members. So of course, board members are uh, uh, like newly appointed when government changes, that is understood. But if you carefully look at, I'm not going to read out one by one, there are four members coming from the business sector. Other four members are just appointed, uh, representing various agencies of the government. Uh, so including chairman, CEO, or vice chair, and representative of US uh, trade office. If you carefully look at the profile of these things, they are the guardians of neoliberal market economies. They are well trained. They have uh, uh, enormous knowledge about the market economies and they promote. If you look at the representative from Office of US Trade, so well-known advocate for the America first trade policies. If America uh, first trade policy is going to be implemented through these things, how is it going to help the developing country? So it's really debatable. Um, even the chairman, the ex uh, CIA director from 2017 to 18, I'm not saying that they, they can't uh, take part of these kind of, I mean, I'm telling, uh, uh, trying to reveal the fact that Finally, their ideologies are embedded in the market model. And even though they try to appear in front of the general uh, public as independent agency to help developing countries. So it's all right today. It does not mean that we need to just run away from this thing, deal with this basic understanding that, uh, the, the, the situation. And above the board, there is an advisory council. So people are also appointed from political connection and economic advisory council, simply speaking, though it is said to be independent agency, it is not an independent agency. Then I'll come to uh, uh, the MCC in Sri Lanka. So that's who you are most interested and um, eager to hear from me. Actually, it is uh, um, a compact uh, with a 480 million uh, grant which was due to be signed before end of uh, December, 2019. But by that time, you know that there was a uh, presidential election. Government also changed uh, by taking uh, these other uh, arguments. So it was delayed. Technically speaking, if the MCC follows a uh, rule-based uh, principles, now MCC cannot talk about uh, 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 this kind of the compact in Sri Lanka because the time has lapsed if you follow the objective rules. So it, though it appears to be like following objective rules, they are not because they try to use these uh, instruments to achieve their own objectives. Anyway, so our project has two components. One is the transport project. The other one is land project. Actually, these two areas are burning issues in Sri Lanka because transportation has become a real uh, issue in Sri Lanka, traffic congestion, even within metropolitan areas and the other, uh, the, suburb, uh, the, the suburb areas, provinces. So it has become a real issue. Of course, this has to be addressed. There is a need. And the land project so deals with so many uh, uh, issues. One is about this ownership. Some lands are there, people are in the tenure, the occupied, uh, pub, I mean, the uh, uh, state land occupied by general public without having any rights to the tenure and all. So technical things are there whenever they want to take a borrow or money or uh, any other aspects. So lots of um, issues are there. So therefore these two areas are in a way, uh, I mean, uh, uh, prioritized areas. However, there is a, a question whether these projects were developed with the consultation of general public or not. So when we explore the information, I found that independently, the Ministry of Transportation had, had developed a kind of transportation project similar to this one. Even the land ministry had been talking about uh, uh, the importance of uh, digitization of land deeds uh, and other uh, uh, like addressing the problematic areas. So in a way, what I uh, like uh, feel is that 
since the, the, these two things are burning issues, MCC had a chance of plugging these projects into uh, MCC, uh, whereby it would be easy for uh, Sri Lankan government to um, sell it. So look at this. So, so this is the budget. Uh, 350 million has been allocated for the transportation project, advanced traffic management system, and the bus transportation service and central ring road network activity. This is how uh, selected provinces are going to be connected. It does not mean that it is a, a, a network that covers the entire country, only selected provinces and selected districts. So the problem is just like, I'm not going to, to discuss in detail aspects and the uh, uh, provisions included in the approved uh, document, but it, it has been very clearly in aggregate mentioned that even within the transport and the transportation system, this advanced traffic management and monitoring system is not controlled by Sri Lanka at the end. So it would be controlled by MCC maybe office somewhere in the United States. So there's a huge risk associated with even with that because a huge amount has been allocated. Therefore it is easy for us to, if you want to like, I mean, if you're pro MCC, you, you can justify all the time by bringing all these 0 0.1, 0 0.1 to 1.3. There is no argument about this thing. So finally, so we, we need to uh, analyze and discuss the negative consequences of these things and the risks arising from this uh, when that is going to be implemented. Then the second part, the land project. The land project, um, it, to some extent, uh, as far as the amount of money spent is relatively small. But from political point of view, I think this is more critical than this transport project. Why? As I just explained you, uh, tenures have so many issues pertaining to land. When you go to the countryside, now they struggle, especially in uh, provincial areas, they struggle to live. Then, even though they struggle to live, to a great extent, even poor villagers have a small parcel of land. Small. Sometimes it is not that small, maybe a few hectares. So they have it. But they don't have adequate cash flows to carry out their own uh, agriculture or any other industry or any other entrepreneurship or any other businesses. But they are proud of living in that particular land. So this project finally uh, uh, is aiming to commodify the land market, commodify the land market. So very clearly it is stated that there are an ample amount of uh, state lands, private lands, which are not in use, even the, uh, the lands which are in use, they are not effective. If land is used ineffectively, there is an economic argument that of course, you better convert that to uh, the effective use. There is no argue, I mean, argument about this thing. If there is land, it is not in use, either held by private or public, again, you can bring in an economic argument. Yes, why don't you use it and bring argument? Danger is here. So there is no assurance. There are no plans that how best, so individual tenures or land loads or the poor farmers, villagers are going to benefit from these things. So it is more likely that in a situation where the land is uh, going to be commodified and the land market is open for sure. I mean, as of now, there, there are constraints that they can't simply sell the land and th th think of their life. But in a situation where the market is developed and the commercial price of the land goes up and if they don't have any other means of economic, uh, uh, economic means to uh, uh, have their own lives, so automatically that would pressurize uh, the farmers to sell the land. And finally, the arrangement has been made uh, for big companies. So they may have a stake in USA or other countries, we do not know, but arrangement and to have big companies to buy all those lands. And sometimes they may put up factories and all, but these people would become like um, uh, underprivileged uh, 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 workers or laborers of these factories. So th this would be a, a kind of in the scenario of this project, if this is going to be implemented with this condition, with these conditions. Because um, e even though neoliberal economic policies have um, 
intruded the Sri Lankan economy, there are certain areas, uh, social values have not been crowded out. But with this, it is more likely that that area, because our social emotional attachment to land and will, uh, will have no value once this is commodified. So that is a big danger. And some sizable amount of uh, money has also been set aside for uh, program administration and oversight purposes as well. And the roadmap, uh, candidacy uh, uh, to MCC, actually the candidacy for MCC was in 2006. Then there was a little bit um, hiccups and ups and downs. You know, we uh, passed a war period and the post-war politics. After that, there was a discussion about the reconciliation, but even the government uh, um, uh, uh, elected uh, later on did not take these issues seriously. As a result, uh, so-called scorecards, even the, the, there were some conflicts with US and uh, um, Sri Lanka and Sri Lanka was more skewed towards China to obtain loans and other things. As a result, USA also played, the, played its trump cards saying that your scorecard is poor. Your scorecard is not satisfactory. So they, they were not extending this thing. They were just manipulating the situation. Then the government changed in 2015. So once the government changed in 2015, of course, then uh, they, they, they may, 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 the, the MCC may have seen that it could be renegotiated. Then the eligibility notification was issued in 2016, asking us to monitor our indicators. So whereby at the end of 2016, our scorecard indicators, 13 indicators out of 20 were satisfied. Then, so congressional note was issued to intend the negotiating in 2018. Then in 2019 only, it was open for public debate. However, then there was another, uh, like a uh, uh, like political uh, instance, the prior to this particular approval of MCC, President of Sri Lanka, then that is Michael Pala Sirisena, dismissed the Prime Minister that is Ranil Wickremesinghe and appointed uh, uh, Mahindra Rajapaksa in 2018. So this political uh, 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 situation or term oh, Dr. Fernando, yeah. Dr. Fernando, you have less than three minutes time. Please. Okay, sure. So we did this. Okay. Thank you. Then the uh, deadline was said to be um, 2019. Then again, the change in government. Now the important part, so since I have just limited time, I'll quickly, I'll skip this part, uh, but I, I just wanted to highlight even MCC just manipulate the corruption, con like control of corruption indicator. It is a fact that even the new government so really is full of corruption, but the indicator said that there is an improvement, but I'm just to tell you that if whenever you want, these instruments can be manipulated. You can massage all these numbers. Then other concern, I'll just uh, quickly come uh, to this. Now, uh, um, even I can skip that one. And this is this. the scope of public debates, debates on MCC at present. Actually, there is an insignificant pro MCC argument because some may uh, praise MCC saying that you can uh, improve your uh, foreign reserves that end up like showing economic benefits. But there is a general sentiment against MCC, but without a proper study in terms of, uh, uh, I mean, structural, so without studying, but in terms of uh, anti-imperialist statements coined with identity politics driven by nationalism in Sri Lanka to great extent, we can bring about the slogan saying that, so our country is going to be betrayed to imperialism and all these things. So this government or that government and whoever who comes out with that particular thumb card can always hold. But there is a problem. This particular present government was vehemently opposed to MCC before the presidential election. Now they are in a troubled water. So on one hand, they want to sign it, but on the other hand, they can't sign it because general sentiment is against. So from the progressive point of view, even the media campaign has been set to support the government. In future, it looks like uh, government might dilute the negative impact of these things and show the general public saying that this would be good and it is more likely that the agreement would be signed. But unfortunately, in Sri Lankan, uh, the context, uh, adequate uh, uh, protest or discussion is not there from real uh, critical perspective or left political perspective. So actually, we are trying hard as national intellectual organization and national people's power. We are trying hard to do this thing at this particular point in time. In conclusion, I would like to say that, of course, 
within these uh, global political scenarios, geological political opportunities always prevail, but challenges are enormous in the pursuit of upholding the public interest. So therefore, what matters? Therefore, it is likely that the long-term political and social cost of MCC over the financial benefit that are perceived unless and otherwise these opportunities are like uh, uh, politically, uh, 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 political ideologies and political uh, with the proper political ide ideologies are managed and focus on the public interest. I know that that is a big challenge, but it is the task of intellectuals and other progressive people, left oriented people, so whoever who talk about the public interest need to come forward and join hands uh, without national boundaries. Of course, uh, we express our solidarity to join hands with you in future and join hands with other countries and uh, making general public aware of these things. Of course, if there is a possibility with our understanding of we, we better do it. Otherwise, without knowingly, we should not be trapped. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Dr. Yeah. Anil Fernando for your yeah. deliberation. Uh, now we are um, at the end of the first round of the session. As uh, I have already mentioned you that uh, Dr. Pimala Rai uh, will not be here as a speaker today yeah. as uh, per her um, notice at the last moment with us. We are sorry for that. Uh, so now uh, we are going to uh, have uh, some questions from the participants. Uh, first of all, I request you all just to write your name uh, and the name of the speaker to whom you are posing the question on the chat box, please. Um, from the uh, chat box, I will pick the names and allow you to speak. So now, uh, uh, Dr. Um, Dr. Raul, are you here? Yeah, yeah, sorry. Uh, firstly, uh, I have a query for you as uh, many of our participants are sharing on the uh, chat box. Uh, many people are, you know, in uh, many people are saying that uh, Nepal Communist Party uh, may be uh, deteriorating the relationship with, uh, uh, with uh, US uh, by making such a uh, tensions uh, and already signed up agreement. And are you afraid of the relations with China, especially uh, about the trans Himalayan um, uh, cooperation and the BRI? Or uh, why is uh, so tensions after such a long period of time? Because so many leaders are uh, were there on the, uh, on the leadership of the government uh, from your party as well. So uh, we will like to uh, hear from you briefly about this question, and we will go to the par uh, participants, please. Thank you. Let me respond very briefly. Thank you, members, for your queries. It is not a question of creating tension. See. It is a question to protect national interest, national security, and the national independence. If U.S. says America first, China, China's president say China is great. Indian prime minister says Hamara Bharat Mahan. If we Nepali say that we have to protect our independence, then if some people think that, oh, these people are creating tension, it is completely baseless allegation. We are not worried about China, India, or any country. We are worried about our own independence. I can prove the provision. At this moment, I have not enough time to explain everything based upon the provisions, and I can show or introduce you the provision to provision because it, due to the time limit. But I can say in definite way, it is a, not a matter of creating tension or deteriorating our relation with the US or any country. You see, every country in the globe these days 
they are working for their own country. Then if a Nepali is working for Nepal, then why a particular country think some people are creating tension? No, this is not a matter related to bilateral uh, improving or deteriorating relation with the US or any other countries, but it is for the protection of our legal system, of our constitution, of our dignity, maintaining our independence. Um, due to the 1950 treaty, Nepal is still facing challenges and difficulties. We are now facing challenges in and around Limpia Dura, Likulik, Kalapani, Shusta, and in many areas due to the self interest of Sritin Maharaj. If the modern Nepal and the people like us, like you and everybody, easily accept that US laws, which are existed now and enacted in future, will prevail over Nepali law. Can Nepali, being a Nepali, can accept this? I'm not talking about the provisions of the agreement. I am a student of law as well. I know that if an agreement is signed between two countries, then automatically the provisions of the agreement prevail over the domestic law. I know it. I am not talking about the provision of agreement. I am stating the provision which clearly says the Nepal has to abide by existing US law and the laws which will be enacted in the future. It is only an example. Therefore, it is not a matter of antagonizing any country. We have to protect our national interests, interest. Parliament has to protect. The Communist Party of Nepal has to protect its uh, country's dignity and national interest. It is only related to that. If, if the US, as Professor Pacquerel says, uh, said, if the US not, is not interested to amend the provisions, then OK, the agreement will be terminated. And some people say that, OK, you are going against the development interest of the country. No. What is the meaning of development of interest of Nepal? To make Nepal a prosperous, dignified, and comparatively a strong country. If the said agreement or any agreement signed between uh, countries, uh, signed between Nepal and any country, weaken the country, reduce its dignity, weaken its independence, then what is the meaning of development? So we have to All understand right. that the provisions of the agreement, many provisions I can prove are very much detrimental to the dignity, independence of the country, which must be stopped. Being a Nepali, I am talking about it. Thank you. All right. All right, Honorable Lahore. I guess uh, there, there are many queries to you from the participants as well. So uh, uh, many of the participants are um, providing their names from the chat box. And I request all of you who are interested to pose the questions. And I, I request all pose one question, uh, only one question from one uh, participant. Uh, so now I request Dr. Chandra Kala Gimiri. Uh, Madam, are you here? Dr. Chandra Kala. Hello? So maybe, maybe she is not getting me right now. Uh, Nanda Kumar Thapa, sir, are you here? Oh. Please. Nanda, sir. Nanda, sir, you have to be unmuted first. You are muted. Please unmute yourself. Okay. Yeah, all right. Okay, is it okay? Yeah, yeah. Excuse yeah, me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> now see what uh, uh, Dr. Bhim Rawal expressed in his uh, inaugural speech. Uh, now told us that there are so many provisions in MCC that are to be followed by the Nepalese government. But none of the rules 
Interseal or non-alignment policies are obliged to be uh, due to this MCC. Even in this situation, why the Nepalese government wanted to just uh, follow all these uh, unbenefited uh, rules of MCC and uh, now sign this uh, agreement. My question to him. So your question is to Dr. Rao? Nanda sir? Yeah, yeah, yes, yeah, Dr. Rao. Yeah, yeah, all right. Uh, Dr. Uh, Rao, thank you. you oh, yes, yes, I, I got it. Yeah, yeah, all right. Thank, thank you, Nanda Kumar Thapaji. Welcome. Uh, I, I do not uh, want to enter into the intention of the government because this agreement was signed uh, by the finance minister under Prime Minister Sir Bhatt Dewa. Mm -hmm. uh, they have only one strong argument. They say that this will deliver services for the development of Nepal, uh, trusting the transmission line and the maintenance of the roads, of high quality roads. But my argument is that the high quality roads and transmission lines are required to Nepal. This is correct. Okay, fine. But these roads and transmission lines are not required at the cost of national independence. If the money is given, grant is given without such preconditions, which are detrimental to our national interest, we are open to accept it. But I don't know, I don't know the intent of those people who are very much trying to ratify this agreement despite, despite the provisions which are very much detrimental and harmful to our nation. I don't know why, what, what is their intention. I do not want to enter into their intention. I not only say that well, if the US wants to impose those provisions, as I already stated, on us, these provisions are not acceptable as an independent country. That's my argument. If you, you are interested to know the provisions in a specific way, I'm ready. Right. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Rao, for your response. Uh, now, uh, I request uh, Santos Pradhanji. Santos Pradhan. Are you, are you there? Uh, I'm here. Thank you. Yeah. Oh, that I, I, namaskar to everyone. Uh, so, Sabai uh, Zanala Namaskar. So, my question to uh, Dr. Bhim Rawal is, uh, let's not go into why MCG is not required. It is not in the interest of Nepalis and uh, it is not in the interest of Nepali sovereignty. We all know that. So, the question, my question here is, how can you uh, enforce your party or bring your all the party members, all the standing committee members and all the central committee members to one place and one voice. It is not necessary that Sarvardhi Deva's government did that, that we have to continue that as continue the same agreement. It is not necessary that. So my question is from the road, from the people, from the general people, from the general young people, uh, how can we stop that since you are a political uh, person as well? So I want that uh, answer politically as well and theoretically as well. How can this be stopped as it is now? That's my question. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Uh, thank you Mr. Santos Pradhan. As you know, uh, the Central Committee of the Communist Party of Nepal, CPF, has already constituted a task force to create uh, own voice inside the party. We have and, submitted a report. And it has uh, not been released. Uh, it, is, it is publicly released. You can, you can read in, in online media and in other uh, newspapers, you see. Uh, though it is not formally publicized, it, you are correct. Yes, that was, that's what the, I'm saying. The task force has already submitted the report and we are requesting our party chairpersons to convene the party meeting to create uh, an environment to have on voice inside the party. Uh, in the central committee meeting, uh, uh, I would like to uh, inform you more than 80% of the central committee members, they voted to look into the details of the agreement uh, to make sure that the provisions of the agreement may not jeopardize our national interest. One, one point. The second point, without the decision of the party, the pr propose uh, for ratification may not be tabled. 
in the House of Representatives, in the Parliament, without getting the, uh, the proposal for ratification, of course, the agreement is not ratified in the Parliament. Um, and inside the party, most of the people, majority of the leaders are of the opinion right without the amendment or change of those provisions which are not in our national interest, the agreement cannot be ratified. Uh, it ensures that without safeguarding our national interest and independence, the agreement will not be implemented. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Dr. Rao. Uh, now, uh, I request uh, Dr. Bal Mukonda Regmi. Um, Dr. Regmi, are you here? Yes. Question, but your sound is not so good. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, now. My, now it's okay. my, my very short question goes to Dr. Dean Rawal. The Please. question is, if we had so many objections, how five prime ministers and their finance ministers and so many governments cooperated with MCC before it signed it, and how all this dispute has been in the picture just for last one year or so? Dr. Rao. Okay. Uh, thank you, Balabhavan uh, Pagmiji. As you know, immediate after the cessation of the violent conflict in our country, we entered into the peace process and the constitution making process in Nepal. At that time, the governments were not stable and there were, they, they, they were coalitions. When I was in the cabinet under Prime Minister Madhukar Nepal, at that time also, Nepali Congress, the representatives from the Nepali Congress and, and the Madhisi Morsa were there. And at that time, nothing was discussed among political leaders about the MCC. I don't know, working inside the Ministry of Finance about it. That's why nothing was made public. Nothing was brought in the party, in the party's purview for the discussion. That's why when the agreement was put before the parliament, only after the submission, we knew that there were such provisions in the agreement. Some, some people, they say, well, why you didn't debate before the uh, signing of the agreement? Because the agreement was not made public. It was not brought, under, uh, brought in our notice. That's the reason we could not discuss and debate on those provisions. Now, why the prime ministers and finance ministers, uh, some of the prime ministers or former prime ministers and finance ministers, they support this agreement. I have not a clear idea why they are sub supporting, if some people are supporting. Uh, maybe uh, one reason might be the fear, thinking that, well, how can we ward off such a deep, powerful US if we go Contrary to the interest of the US, we might be crushed or our position will be crushed. But I think our, our position is for the country. The interest of our country, independence of our country, dignity of the country, position of our uh, constitution is crushed or weakened. Then what would be the meaning of our position? being a prime minister or finance minister or foreign minister. So I think sometime maybe self-interest, sometime maybe out of the fear of the position or maybe the pre international pressure or might be the reasons why some of the former prime ministers or present ministers, uh, they uh, are supporting even those, uh, even the agreement despite its uh, provisions which are not in the interest of Nepal. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Dr. Rao. Uh, there is a question uh, from a participant to uh, Professor Bisumar Pakurel. Uh, Bisumar, sir, are you getting me? Yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. As Nepal is yeah. already signed in 
on the BRI project, what will be the Chinese response to MCC in your opinion? Do you see Chinese, it's a tough situation? Yeah, yeah, the person, yeah. yeah not finished yet, not, not finished yet, sir, please. Oh, sorry. Uh, yeah, do you see such tough situation to choose uh, one uh, between the two, uh, BRI and uh, MCC? Do you think such a top situation? Yeah, these, these two are the questions to you. No, no, this is not the question of choosing either of the one. Actually, if Nepal's conditionality is fulfilled, we can, we can go for the two agreements. So far as the question of Chinese perception is concerned, whatever way I explained in the very beginning <clears throat> about the intention of the United States of America, because as soon as they found out that the Spat Lutton Island was very much used by the China with such a uh, huge wealth of uh, economic resources. And then Chinese did some kind of maneuverings, naval maneuvering. And then USA was much more serious in Indo-Pacific strategy to have an alliance with more and more countries. So there are a couple of issues that we need to think about for future safety, you know. If tomorrow, you never know. I mean, the president currently is so much unpredictable. Uh, even the Americans don't know, even the Republicans don't know. Colin Powers remarked, you must have been aware about that. So if he comes with the idea that tomorrow, even whatever resources that we provide to other countries through the USAID, it will come under IPS, what are we going to do that? Uh, are you going to uh, take those... Uh, 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 sort of offers or we outright reject that offer because it comes under the umbrella of IPS. So my recommendation is the time may come tomorrow to go on project specific agreement. The, the issues that was raised by Dr. <coughs> Rawal was also project specific uh, misleading issues that we accepted ahead of the time. So in Sri Lanka's case, they are still going on uh, to discuss about various facets. So, so far as the question of Chinese perception uh, with regards to uh, MCC is concerned, very recently, if you go back to January 3, what Chinese uh, ambassador Hu Yang, uh, Hu Yang Ki, uh, he, he, she, she, she very clearly said, uh, I quote, we welcome any international assistance to Nepal if it is for economic cooperation. We would like to see the ratification process of the MCC and the Nepal government take a positive decision for this interest. So you can interpret her statement the way you really like it. So my point is, let us not worry too much about what Chinese perception is on MCC. Uh, what India's perception, of course, India would be happy the moment India finds out that Nepal has ratified MCC because one of the strong supporters and USA's alliance on IPS is from India. So India would be happy. Uh, everybody uh, knows about this and we don't need any further elaboration on it. But so, so far, the question of a couple of issues, like for instance, although we we we, we tell everybody uh, that this is for five years uh, 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 project, but the reality is we have only nine months in a year. So out of forty-five uh, sort of months, we have we'll be having only forty months because two months is given to contractor to see how sustainable the work would be in a year's completion. And then number two, one month for uh, Dasai and Tihar and two months for monsoon, no work, no work at all. So uh, the MCC project allows you to work only for nine months in a year, uh, which is also taken over by sort of holiday. So in fact, in reality, it's hardly 3.44, uh, uh, sort of years, you know. So uh, the, then what will happen? Our track record is very bad. 
until the 10 months of this fiscal year, if you look at the trend of uh, capital sector expenditure by all the seven states, it doesn't exceed more than 35% until now, it doesn't exceed. Uh, it was 25% uh, on the average by the ninth month. So if that happens, you know, the moment USA uh, would go back to United States, whatever amount of money we have injected into our economy, we'll have to take care of that. So there will be time overrun, there will be cost overrun. There are so many factors before we really made any decision to come into the agreement. So my point is, after you discuss a lot on this, well, we don't have much time left that I know, because if you believe on what uh, U.S. ambassador very recently said, like, you know, you already had some uh, uh, breathing space. It has already been agreed upon now. There is no scope that this will be uh, amended. If that's the final word, then wait until June. And by June, uh, the, the, the life of the project will be gone and then go back. And there will be no MCC at all. Yeah, I guess we got you well. Professor Pakuel. Um, I think we have, as I, if I um, noted that correctly, we have only three uh, uh, participants with questions. Uh, they are uh, Yanvi Thapa, Subarna Sapkota, and Santos Powell. Please correct me if um, there are somebody as well. So uh, I request Yanvi Thapa Ji to pose his question first, and then after Subarna Ji, please be prepared. Yanvi Thapa? Yes, sir. Yeah, please. Uh, I would like to ask this question to Dr. Uh, Anil Zayanta. I have heard yeah. that uh, Sri Lankan government uh, has not rectified MCC agreement. Uh, why? This is my question, sir. OK, uh, thank you. So the reason is this. Now, actually, um, please, uh, please briefly brief answer. Me, Sure, right. sure. I understand. Yeah. Like uh, in short, like there, I mean, there could be many reasons. Um, simply speaking, the government has not been really weak, like uh, strong enough. Actually, weak government. It was not uh, really made available to the public discourses. They keep everything hidden under the carpet. To just uh, simply speaking, to have personal interest and uh, the gains and the power politics and uh, uh, simply disregarding the public interest, that is the reason. So therefore, MCC has a very good chance of uh, uh, moving uh, ahead with the same MCC. Even you, you, you can understand the situation, the same government. So this government vehemently opposed this MCC uh, before the election. Now this government is trying to dilute the impact in the eyes of the public eyes and to sign. So. I, from the general public's perspective also, there is no adequate uh, protest uh, and because to great extent Sri Lankan uh, society is um, uh, driven um, uh, by emotions uh, like uh, especially identity politics uh, 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 powered by um, uh, in a way racism and religious aspects likewise. Uh, so lots of uh, identity politics uh, political, uh, the pockets are there. It's really a complex situation. Thank you, Dr. Sir. Yeah. Thank, Thank you, sir. you, Dr. Thank you, Dr. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Now, uh, yeah. Subarna Babu's rest. Sorry, uh, Sapkota. Subarna Sapkota, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Yurasdai. Uh, I have one question for each panelist. So how should I further uh, proceed? So I start with Dr. Rawal, maybe? Uh, you have to pose only one question, Subhanaji. OK, then I go so with. It's, it's your decision, please. Okay, I, I go with uh, Professor Pekuro. Uh, yeah, I try to compress my question. It is a little bit long, but in, in one question. Uh, so it goes like this, amount of uh, MCC grant, if we divide in each year that we are receiving, it is not a huge amount. It uh, equals to a very small portion of our national budget. So wouldn't it be more logical if we try to use our own resources and if necessary, we can also think about some powerful authority under National Planning Commission 
And uh, if you read the compact's objective, it's, it clearly states that our major uh, objective is to have a power trade. And for this, we must take India on board. But if you hear the statement for high level authorities from India, they clearly stated that they might not be very friendly with the electricity which are being generated by third party investment other than India. And somehow this doesn't fit in the equation. And in the time of post corona, isn't it a right time to reconsider our development uh, projects, not like huge projects, but locally requirement, like uh, providing the local requirement rather than targeting for the export. Thank you, sir. Yeah, thank you so much, Azir. Professor? Yeah, my uh, response would be uh, pretty brief in the sense like, you know, yes, of course, I mean, uh, we never got such a huge uh, grant assistance before. And usually, most of the grant assistance are non-conditional. It's true that there are two types of grant assistance, conditional and non-conditional. You know, this has a lot of conditionality into it. If the, if the chapter is already closed that there is no reason why US would compromise with us on our recommendation to bring about some changes, then fine. Because we already have two schools of thought now in the country. It will be pretty much divisive for us. It is not good for our political and economic future. Uh, we have to be united. So my request to everybody, to the media is as such, like, you know, if you don't agree on the recommendations that will be brought out into the picture, that will be brought out public. Uh, if you don't agree on that, you can uh, provide your own sort of suggestion. Uh, don't just, just stay behind the screen, you know, you go ahead and then you speak and create public opinion. If nothing happens, we don't have much time left now, I guess we have to back out. So even if you back out, uh, opposition groups and ruling party should have one voice as unlike uh, the map, Nepal's newly uh, brought out map, you know, so we should be one. There should be strong group solidarity in the country because I suspect uh, the, 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 the trend that have been developing lately with a clearly distinct to schools of thought on MCC. You know, MCC, if you do not get it, it doesn't necessarily mean like Nepal will be a fairly state. We'll be fairly state on our own because of our own reason, <laughs> one decision making process and our track record, you know. Uh, so uh, this, is, this is what I think, I personally think. Let's not worry too much if uh, it doesn't come under our sort of recommendations. If USA doesn't compromise, then fine. <clears throat> Let them not compromise. You know, tomorrow, whatever policy they bring out, if they want every US assistance to Nepal or other countries under the broader umbrella of IPS, and then we should think. We, we should again have to go, uh, you know, uh, project specific conditionality. In that case, our life would be a bit easier and simple. Last time what happened, everybody were quite, quite, quite quiet. I don't know why information was not being shared. Well, I, I was not in this country actually. And then I was unaware about many new developments during the time of the agreement. You know, The kind of person we, we, we choose uh, for the committees uh, to be sent to the USA and make a signature. You know, you know, the office of prime minister, the office of uh, finance minister is an institution. You know, there are some other people who give technical backstopping. So uh, actually, public scrutiny should have been done. Uh, Sri Lanka is, from that perspective, uh, is still safe in the sense like, provided that Corona uh, virus does not postpone uh, August 5 parliamentary election, maybe this ruling government, because I dare to say this in front of my Sri Lankan colleagues, I also spent a couple of years in Sri Lanka and I know all these personalities personally. So other things remain the same. If the parliamentary election is held on August 5, and then the real problem will begin, you know, how to endorse or how to bring about more major changes. But still since agreement, final agreement from Sri Lankan part has not been done. So uh, their risk factor is a little bit less than what we are now 
uh, going through. This is what I. Yeah, thank you, Professor Pakuril, for a brief response. Uh, maybe uh, Subhanazi got the point. Uh, now, maybe the last uh, uh, participant to pose the question, uh, Mr. Santos Paurel. Santosi? Santosi, are you there? Yes, please. You can speak now. Uh, yeah, so my question is uh, to Dr. Bhim Rawal. Yeah, please. Uh, a lot of uh, discussion has been made uh, regarding the amendment of the clauses, but uh, do we really think that amending the clause uh, would derail US from any kind of their vested interest? Because I don't think uh, the problem is with the clauses. Uh, the problem is in the entirety itself. And uh, why are we not, are we just talking about MCC or not? And why are we not talking about the alternative, like how to grow our economy uh, organically, like how to grow economy without grant or aid in the situation? If not now currently, but we can at least plan it for in our medium to longer term. So why is the discussion being just uh, curtailed to MCC or not and not move further? This is my question. Thank you. Please, Dr. Rahul. Thank you, did you get him? Thank you, uh, Santos Paudelji. <laughs> it is a very interesting question. First of all, I would like to check the liberty, saying that, well, no country should be the victim of self-condemnation, inferiority, and easily submit its interest. We have seen many countries in the globe we have done it. They were they are either in mess or partly destroyed. We have to be protected from such situation first. While you are talking about our long-term alternatives. Yes, I agree with you. We have many alternatives. We have to explore. Just I would like to remind a distinguished participant about the Mahakali Treaty. I was a member of the House of Representatives at, at that time. We had, we had repeatedly requested that, please don't move ahead without clarifying the origin of the Mahakali River, that is Limpia Dura. But at that time, I do not want to mention the name. See, all of you are aware of the fact. They said, well, we are getting trillions of rupees Treaty. What happened? 23 years already passed. And there is a provision to review the agreement every decade. What is happening? While the provisions of the MCC, they clearly states one thing, then is it rational to talk otherwise? No. So, as uh, Mr. Porter said that, we are not talking about thinking entirety. Yes. Because we want to see the amendment and changes of those provisions which are not in the interest of our country, which are unequal, which are against inter established international principles. We want to see those provisions changed because we don't have any enmity or presets thinking about the US. So that's our point. If the US does not want change, then the agreement cannot be implemented. So if the agreement is not implemented, there is no reason the relation between Nepal and US should be deteriorated. No, because there are issues. On some issues, we can agree. On other issues, we can disagree. This is what, this is how the relations between countries are conducted in the world. There are issues between China and the US, on which both countries agree. And there are other several issues that differ. Even the US, look, now the entire world is facing Corona pandemic. At the same time, the US has decided to withdraw from the 
World Health Organization WHO saying that well, it is important for my national interest. In the same way, the US has withdrawn from WTO mechanism, free Asia-Pacific trade agreement, new agreement with Iran, because the US thought died while well, all these things were not in the interest of, of it. So some people, they talk about that. Well, how can you go back from, our, uh, from an agreement which is signed with a big country? If, if it thinks that this agreement is not according to the national interest or jeopardize its uh, national security, independence, then every country, it is a practice that every country uh, has uh, every country can draw from such agreements and uh, either enter into new agreement or terminate. So, if the MCC, the provisions of the MCC agreements, which are not in line both in international practice, international law, our national law, our national, law, and these provisions drag us towards strategic grouping, going against going against our other friendly countries. We cannot enter into such agreement. That is the point. If this point is not changed, okay, we can in entirety. No, no. Because we have to safeguard first Nepal, then only other countries for economic assistance. If the econ economic assistance or grant itself is detrimental to our nation, then what would be the efficacy of the grant? That's the point. That's why we are talking, we are debating inside the party with the leaders and with the people. And gradually, I hope everybody will realize the reality. Thank you. I finished. Thank you. Uh, Yuraji. Yuraji, Hello. Dr. Raul, uh, just uh, yeah, come. Yeah. Are, are, you, are, you, are you hearing me now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have finished. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Sorry, because I, I just suffered from okay. a technical problem here. Maybe I'm, I'm sorry for that. No, it's OK. Uh, now, now I think we have uh, just uh, finished the session of question and answer as well. I guess uh, we have uh, provided the chances to all the participants who are um, uh, likely to ask the questions to the speakers. Uh, now on, uh, without uh, further delay, I would like to uh, request uh, for the vote of thanks to uh, executive member of uh, Nepal Institute of International Relations, Mr. Madhika Pogar. Uh, please. Not hearing. Your microphone is muted. Thank you. Thank you, Yuvraji. Uh, thank you, Yuvraji, and uh, everyone here. Um, I'm honored to receive you, to host you as one of the um, executive members of NIIR. Uh, the respected chair, our valued speakers, Honorable Dr. Raul, uh, Honorable Dr. Vimla, uh, Professor Dr. Bisombar Pakurel, Dr. Anil, all the way from uh, Sri Lanka, and uh, distinguished scholars and the valued guests, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, NIIR, uh, has uh, tried its best to uh, bring you here on a common forum so that we can have our say, uh, debate, and put our um, individual opinion forward uh, among the scholars. And um, I'm very happy, uh, Dr. Uh, Raul, uh, as one of the higher political body in Nepal, uh, the ruling party of the country, uh, 
tried his best to disclose so many unseen things that uh, Nepal, Nepali and other scholars um, have to uh, apprehend before any uh, things happen against uh, on behalf against uh, the sovereignty and national integrity of the nation. Um, having said that, I uh, I would uh, like to express my sincere uh, um, thanks to uh, my fellow um, executive members, especially Dr. Uh, Rishi Rajadikari, uh, Mr. Nanda Kumar Thapa, Mr. Sunil uh, Kumar Podel, uh, Ms. Uh, Manjali Sthakia, uh, Mr. Pradeep Pariyar, um, among others, uh, because because of your sincere uh, contribution and certain sacrifices, uh, this uh, uh, could take place. And the idea of uh, uh, doing a seminar webinar on the current issues, uh, very hot debate as uh, Professor um, Pakural said, hot, hot cake, uh, we could translate into a reality. Uh, thank you again. And uh, my sincere thanks also to the scholars who posed uh, the timely questions on the, a very precise issue. And thank you all. Uh, we will have so many uh, seminars, uh, webinars on uh, the contemporary issues and socio-political, economic, and other strategically significant issues in the future. Um, we expect your valued presence. And thank you again, um, everybody. And uh, uh, we are honored on behalf of uh, NIIR. Uh, I express uh, that I, we are honored uh, that you contributed um, and you made the day um, uh, for us and for all. Thank you, everybody. Oh, thank you. Thanks as well. Yeah, thank you, my colleague, Mati uh, Now, uh, uh, it's a uh, time for the closing remark of the chairperson of this session. Uh, it is my honor to be here as a moderator of this session. Uh, my special gratitude towards uh, Honorable Dr. Dean Brawal, Professor Dr. Vishimba Pakure, uh, Dr. Uh, Anil from Colombo, Sri Lanka. Uh, it would be wonderful if uh, there would be a, a lady speaker as well uh, in the panel. We tried that, but unfortunately, we could not do that because of the uh, some technical problem, maybe, to Dr. Dimala Rai. We apologize for that. Uh, by the way, this uh, whole episode of the discussion, uh, the interaction, uh, has been uh, live broadcasting uh, from the uh, Facebook uh, page of uh, Nepal Institute of International Relations. Uh, it will be further. Uh, uh, it, it will be further uh, downloaded to the uploaded to the YouTube channel as well. And everybody, uh, if you you want to recall the uh, session again, you can do that anytime after the uh, uploadment of the to the uh, YouTube channel. And we request to all the fellow panelists, uh, if uh, you have uh, time uh, and uh, you want to do. do Please uh, provide your this, all the opinions you just share today with us uh, in the public uh, uh, and in, in this area as well. Uh, please provide uh, your opinions uh, in a written for a written form so that uh, we can publish it in the journal that is to be published from the near side. Uh, I want to thank uh, to um, the panelists once again. Uh, Mr. Pisal Powell and Engineer Pona Bahadur Kumar for their technical assistance. Uh, Madam Mina Sarma and Engineer Nobin Sarlagai for their support in the technical sites. Uh, and of course, to all the members of the NEET team. Now, without uh, delay further, uh, I uh, just apologize if I did any mistake during my, um, uh, during my work in the uh, session. Uh, and I request Dr. Uh, uh, Adhikari uh, to uh, Dr. Risiraj Adhikari to deliver the uh, concluding remarks. Thank you. Thank you, Ibrazi. Yes, we are running short of uh, time. We are, uh, it's already late evening and all of us I feel are hungry already. I will not take much of your time. 
uh, main speaker, former Deputy Prime Minister and Defence and Home Minister, and currently the Member of Parliament, Dr. Bhim Bahadur Rawal, speakers, Professor Dr. Isambar Pakurial, speaker Dr. Anil Fernando. And we, we missed Bimala Pakurial this time, but we are sure that we can catch up with her in a more you know, uh, lively session in the next uh, uh, webinar in the days to come. Other distinguished personnel with expertise and interest in foreign policy and, and strategic interest. My colleagues at NIIR, a very good afternoon. I'm delighted and thankful to all of you for your active participation and contributions in the preceding deliberations. Rich views have been shared and much has been discussed this afternoon on the issue of Millennium Challenge Corporation and MCA, I would not prefer to repeat it. Meanwhile, I must share that there are mainly three views of the Nepalese people on, on MCA, MCC. Either accept in total entirety, reject in total, or accept with some modifications, amendments on the agreement. Accept it because it has huge sum of much needed finance for our crucial infrastructure. Accept it because we can continue good friend relations with the USA as superpower. Accept it to avoid losing face amidst the Committee of Nations on huge amount of revenue by sale of extra electricity internationally. And, uh, and reject it because the agreement is having numerous terms and conditions, conditionalities detrimental to Nepal's sovereignty, territorial integrity, and national independence. It contains provisions that are very risky to the nation. Nepal debate on MCC is not based on our political conviction, but on our national interest. Geopolitically, MCC has come to a confronting interest of China, our friendly neighbor. Nepal does not take part in any military alliance and seriously believes MCC is part of IPS. It is clearly evident MCC support is very much part of US security strategy based development funding. MCC is unequal, unequal agreement signed by ministers from Nepal and lower level official from MCC USA. MCC agreement says it is international law that applies, whereas Nepal domestic law should apply. Intellectual property right is totally under USA, even after the completion of the project, ignoring Nepal's contribution to US, contribution of US dollar 130 million. Requiring India's undue participation is evident in the, in the agreement. No Nepali law applied to penalties, penalize defaulting MCC officials, they go scot-free. Amendment do not seek Nepal parliament ratifications. We believe Nepal must accept development support from our friendly countries, including USA, but it must be decided project-wise. Reject those that, are in, that we analyze to be asking to compromise our national interest, rest we should accept readily. The MCC Jan agreement may needs to be redone and accepted only after amending the articles that are supposedly detrimental to the past in this interest. Once again, I thank you all and close this afternoon's important webinar. We will meet soon over other important issues. I request for your IRS future in the bus. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you. Rishiji and all members. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Rao. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Anil. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, Dr. Rao, Dr. Anil. Thank you, everybody. Professor Thank you. Thank you, Professor Thank you. 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 Please end of the session. Host. Yeah. <laughs>
Technical coordinator, please wrap up the session. This is over now. Rajan, sir. <laughs> I was already going to say, I'm 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 going to say, I'